We are now joined by the Haitian sensation Neil Magny, part of a midweek Fight Island main event against Michael Chiesa. And Neil, you've been in a main event against Santiago Ponzinibbio in Buenos Aires, against Kelvin Gastelum in Monterrey, Mexico. How nice is it to be in a main event, but not fighting a guy in enemy territory? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely cool being in front of neutral grounds, finally, so to speak. I mean, to have two Americans fighting in Abu Dhabi uh, is definitely uh, a better stake as far as uh, not being in enemy territory, getting things yelled at you and everything like that, walking out to the cage. So definitely appreciate that. Fans are, are back in a limited capacity. I believe about 10% of the venue will be full, but you've had two fights under your belt in the empty arena mid-pandemic reality in which we all reside, whereas your opponent has not. What kind of advantage do you think that might give you in that unique environment where the standard number of fans aren't in attendance for a five-round main event? Um, so this is going to be interesting. Both my opponent and I have uh, been on a TV show, The Ultimate Fighter, where uh, we had to film for seven to 13 weeks. Uh, no audiences getting uh, four fights within that time period. Um, and we both did pretty well on that show. So um, I don't think this is going to be any different for him um, going out there and competing with the limited capacity uh, people in, in attendance. Um, if anything, I feel like it's going to help the both of us just getting that funny hair and that crowd uh, uh, once again, again, that motivation from the crowd and be able to feed off that energy. I think it's just going to bring uh, more intensity to the fight. Yeah, I mean, all due respect to Bristol Marundi, th these are different stakes, though. W what do you think helps you more? Having experience in the tough house and, and going through that bracket in a warehouse in suburban Las Vegas or fighting in, in arenas or Abu Dhabi or, or the UFC Apex in sanctioned full-on fights without fans? Um, it's, it's weird. It definitely, I, th I feel like they both have their, uh, um, advantages, advantages. One thing that's pretty cool about it is the, uh, um, just mentally the place that it puts you in. I mean, I can't remember having fights with the audience there where it could be a little distracting at times. I remember one fight where I'm sitting there, I'm in a cage, I'm, I'm getting focused. And then I look up and Mike Tyson's staring back at me. I'm just like, wait, Mike Tyson's here to watch me fight tonight. And it just completely throws my game off that night because uh, I can't get past the fact that Mike Tyson's watching me fight finally. Um, so having the limited crowd definitely allows you to be able to focus in a bit more on your opponent or what, are, what it is you're trying to do that night. Um, but like I said earlier, I, I definitely enjoy the um, energy that the crowd brings to the table and uh, how hype you get during that event. Well, twice early in your career, you shared a card with Michael Chiesa. You guys are uh, similar in age, similar at least in, in UFC tenure. How has that relationship evolved over time as your paths in your career have gradually merged over the last seven or eight years? Yeah, it's kind of interesting because when I first started my career off with Mike Chiesa, we were both in uh, in different weight classes. Um, even when we started our career on the Ultimate Fighter TV show, um, he was the season prior to me, uh, where there, at one point we were both going to be on the same season at once. Um, and then the producers decided to go with uh, two separate weight classes instead. Uh, so we were split up uh, in that sense. But um, he and I have been going uh, back and forth over the last uh, eight years or so uh, with our careers, being on similar paths, being on similar cards, uh, going a similar direction. But um, now that we're both fighting in the same weight class and both chasing the same uh, goal, it definitely changes the stake a bit more because at the end of the day it's uh they're going to be one champion and the uh, guy standing in, in front of me right now is one of the uh cool guys so to speak a guy that i have respect for and a guy who um I, i've talked to and hung out with on numerous occasions yeah the stakes in this division are obvious both of you guys in the top 10. Uh, mike has said though he was a little worried that this fight may not happen because he was told that if leon edwards dropped out against hamzat shemaev you were going to step in and face shemaev in the main event. I know it, it was Chimaev who had an issue. They, they pushed that fight back. But what is the level of truth to that, that you would have been the fill-in against Chimaev if it came to that? Um, so I was ready to fill in for these guys ever since uh, December 19th. And um, it, it kept getting pushed back because of the uh, uh, the likelihood that it was just to be 
oh, it'll just be a week and these guys will be back together. It'll just be uh, a couple of days and we'll get this thing resolved. So uh, because of that anticipation, it never uh, followed through. Um, but there was a point where I was pretty much told that, hey, man, be on standby because if this fight pulls out on a day's notice, a week's notice, uh, a month's notice, uh, we're, we're calling you up and you're going to be the guy that's going to replace either uh, Leon Edwards or Chimaev. Um, so I was definitely ready to step up and fight either one of those guys on however long the notice was. But um, at the end of the day, I'm kind of glad that I got the matchup with Mike Chiesa. Uh, we're getting the opportunity to both go out there and shine in the main event. So, yeah, so you do get Chiesa. What is something that he does well in the octagon that somebody like me who knows his biographies and watches him fight may miss as a, a I guess, a non-fighter himself? Um, so uh, for Mike Yes, I mean the guy's definitely a game opponent. Currently he's riding a three fight win streak at Walterweight. He's undefeated at Walterweight um since moving up from a, a, a lighter division. Um and he brings a lot of uh tools to the table. I mean, um he's a very uh well rounded fighter, but his grappling is uh by far some of the best in the world. Um and I feel like that's a, a place in the fight that he can um uh really surprise a lot of people and show some uh some good techniques there. Um, uh, but overall, he's just a, a very well-rounded, tough fighter, and I feel like to bring out the best of both of us. For so much of your career, something that defined you was how active you have been in the octagon. You're like a 2014, 2015. I think you fought eight or nine times over those two years. What does an ideal 2021 for you look like from an activity standpoint? Um, so I'm looking to be as active as possible in 2021. I mean, uh, for me, at the end of the day, the goal is uh, to become a UFC world champion. So uh, if I can make that happen before the year is up, I'm definitely going to do everything within my power to make it happen. Uh, so if it means I have to fight every other month from now until the end of the year, um, I'm definitely willing and able to do that. So um, I'm looking to be as active as possible to make those dreams a reality for myself. Neil Magny should be a hell of a fight against Michael Chiesa in Abu Dhabi. Neil, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us, man. All the best against Chiesa. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.